Someone from the dark. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's here me! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! <laughs> Hello everyone, it's ETK and we are back with everyone's favorite segment on my channel. My most popular videos are about the incel subcultures of incels, femcels, and the black pill ideology. And so of course, per your vote of popularity, we are here with a new video, and today I got a special one. Instead of reading the usual post from the incels.is forum, I ran into a wild video of an incel story time that caught my attention. I figured I'd do a reaction to it. That all being said, if you enjoy this series, don't forget to, if you haven't, go watch my other videos about the incels, femcels, and black pill concepts. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. I want to preface this by saying that I am pretty much objectively the bad guy in this story. I know some of you guys see my posts and think that they're sympathetic. It's it's not this time. I'm not gonna lie, the dark lighting in the skull mask wasn't giving away you being the bad guy in this scenario at all. Like, like not even remotely, not even a little bit. So I used to know this girl, I'm gonna call her Candy. Candy would always come into school very tired and she would sleep at her desk a lot. I number one did think that she was kind of attractive number two just kind of wanted to help out so i go up to her and i say hey you're always tired do you want me to start bringing in energy drinks or coffee for you in the morning while i do think it's really sweet that he offered to bring somebody who clearly looked like they hadn't been getting good sleep and they haven't been resting well some kind of energy drink or some kind of coffee or something just to help them make it through the day i happen to feel like his intention was placed because he was attracted to her at least a little bit and if that is the sake or if that is the case your good intentions kind of get washed away by the fact that you're doing it with the underlying tone that maybe you'll get something eventually out of it she goes yeah sure uh and that kind of happened for about one month about, and I just kind of started disliking Candy. See, Candy was a very quiet, personal girl, a little bit of an emo. She wouldn't go out of her way to really talk to anybody, but she still managed to be a, a relatively popular figure. Most people knew her, Most of the, almost all of the girls in school knew her. See, I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was gonna be some kind of reasonable story time until he said, I started to hate Candy. Because what do you mean? You approach this girl and you formed a connection, you formed a friendship, or at least you formed a situation where she's benefiting off of you, and now you're upset about it, or you're upset about the connection when you're the one who engaged it? That can't pos be possible. And I was pretty much upset because I was seeing a lot of my own personality traits in her, but somehow she managed to break the code and still have a functioning normal social life. Now, if you've seen any of my videos on incels, I touch about this being like a consistent personality trait of incels that a lot of the time, they struggle to see things from the perspectives of others. And this lack of being able to see perspective causes them to become envious of people and jealous of people very, very easily. Again, if you lived a life where you felt like you were not afforded any kind of social interaction or, or afforded basic human decency from other people, nobody liked you, no girls liked you, nobody wanted to be your friend, nobody was romantically interested in you. I could see a reasonable world where people would be become jealous and spiteful very easily. So I'm saying it's not far-fetched and it's been pretty consistent in the incel community that this personality type and this kind of situation develops. And I'm not gonna lie, that, 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 that upset me. That really did upset me. Unfortunately, I wasn't as black-pilled as I am now. And in my frustration, I felt like I wanted to lash out. I felt like there was some kind of injustice that was being had here. I now realize that there was no injustice and that that's just how things go, and that people like me aren't meant to have those kinds of things. And I can't help but feel like, as unfortunate as the situation of being outcasted in high school and being treated like garbage by people, right? A lot of the times we are the shepherd of our own misery. As to which I apologize. Now I never acted out on my feelings of anger, but I did do pretty much something just as bad. I did the one thing you should never do with a bitch, and that's talk about how you really feel. I feel like unless somebody obligates themselves to put themselves in the position of making it their interest to care about your mental health and your feelings, it is not other people's job to care about your mental health or your feelings. And unfortunately, that's so true in the world. Not only are people a lot of the times driven by our own self-interest, but even the things just like this guy, for example, he gave this girl energy drinks because he thought she was attractive and he took an interest in her. That's a selfish motivation right so then we flip the coin on the other side you're upset that other people are selfishly motivated to the same girl that you were selfishly motivated to it's almost as if you are no better than the people around you but you're only unable to see their perspective 
and you said, the worst thing I could have done is talk about my feelings. Well, the worst thing you could have done was talk about your feelings to somebody who is not obligated to care. Because again, basic human decency, believe it or not, is not something everybody believes in. I think in the modern day, more than anything, people are way, way more interested in what's going on with them personally. It's not their job to care. So I went to school really fucked up one day and during one of the periods that I had with Candy, I sat next to her and for some reason I unloaded a lot of the negative thoughts that I had. You trauma dumped on a girl who you give energy drinks to because you walked up to her and said you look tired, do you want energy drinks? I mean, I don't know what you expected to do at that point. If you're dumping all of your negative thoughts and your self-destructive thoughts and your violent thoughts and all of these things on a person who doesn't care and does not know how to handle that, again, another teenager or teenage girl at that, what would you expect to happen? She's not a medical professional, your mom or a therapist. It's not her job to give a fuck about what's going on in your head. Not just about her, but pretty much in general. Now she didn't really say too much on it at the moment, but immediately afterwards it was clear to me that I just cut myself for no reason is over. Now she would avoid me at pretty much any opportunity she could after that, and honestly that part's fine, I'm used to people not wanting to be around me. Yeah, I believe she wouldn't have much to say, you just trauma dumped your entire life story and fucked up reasoning onto her. What would anybody say to that? If you walked up to me and you trauma dumped your whole story to me, the best I could really give you is just, damn because what, what am I supposed to do? The thing is, is that I was just getting more increasingly upset at the world around me, and she seemed to be the perfect representation of everything that I hated. Another thing I talk about with incels, it's the lashing out and being mad at the world. I feel like a lot of times incels have very, very poor control of their emotions. It's kind of a characteristic, right? A lot of incels live in a state of constant depression, extreme frustration, and some kind of either diagnosed or undiagnosed mental illness they're carrying with them. Also with the crippling loneliness of being outcasted from society as well. Now girls are a lot like dolphins. If they see a shark, the first order of business is going to be to alert the other dolphins so none of them go near it. But for some reason the story Candy went around telling people was that I was a and again, I would like to paint the perspective here. You are, you have trauma dumped and now you have gone from slightly disliking a girl or being jealous of her to literally hating her. Regardless of your circumstance, she doesn't know what's going on in your head. It doesn't matter how distressed you are. You are still culpable for your actions as a human being, no matter how fucked up your mental state is, regardless. Because again, she's not obligated to give a fuck about anything other than the actions you commit towards her. And to me, you're acting like a creep. Like, I'm I'm also a kind of mentally ill guy, and even I'm reading this and I'm like, yeah, you're creepy, that's creepy. That behavior would read as creepy to a normal person. And it is really messed up that she went around accusing you of something that you didn't do. I do believe that you were creepy and you came off off-putting, but a lot of the times it's very easy as a person who's neurodivergent and not socially well, not socially good, to come off as creepy when you can't read social cues or you can't get along with people or you're not used to it. As in high school, I also struggled with like that. You know what I'm saying? I got read as creepy a lot of the times because I was an undiagnosed neurodivergent person. So obviously I understand that much at least. So that's really f***ed up on her end that she accused you of doing that. You didn't deserve that. Best, and I was stalking her because I wanted to her. In all fairness, the real reason I was becoming such an increasingly uncomfortable person to be around wasn't exactly much better, but it didn't do me any favors. I was just simply barred from talking to any woman, period. It went from me not being able to talk to them because I couldn't pass a mental barrier to even when I found some way to talk to them, they would look at me like I shot their dog just for approaching them. They like the camera. Anyways, at the end of the year, due to many various reasons, I was pretty much ready to clock out. Now my situation with Candy and the other students was not the direct reason for this. It was more of a one piece in a giant Jenga tower that was about ready to fall over. So the way I decided I was gonna go about this was I messaged Candy on Instagram and sent her a bunch of purposefully antagonistic and threatening messages. Not with the intent to carry any of them out, mind you. I was hoping that she would see them, call the police, send them my way, and then what happened after that would have just been for the news. And so like bringing it back to the whole talk about his mental health, saying that this entire situation was just a piece in a Jenga tower of reasons why he did not want to be on this earth anymore. And you have to understand, man, people struggle to read perspective. 
in, in the perspective of the others, your behavior reads as creepy because nobody is going to jump through the mental loops required in their head to deduce why you're acting like this beyond he just is a creep. Nobody would have thought that you were this close to checking out. Nobody would have thought that, especially some teenage girl who you are scaring. You know, when people are scared, rational thought isn't usually involved. And this is some kind of situation that would require more than rational thought. This would require the perspective of a professional or somebody who knows you and knows you're not like that. And it doesn't help to defend your case of you not being creepy, whether you acknowledge that your behavior is or isn't creepy, when your plan for checking out was to send threatening messages to the girl who you already been harassing, mind you, for months, um, who you started your friendship or relationship off with giving energy drinks just because she was existing pretty much, and then slowly began to be envious and then hate her and then threaten her and then trauma dump and then creep her out, you know? In this situation, you're absolutely in the wrong. I'm glad you acknowledge that because to anybody who has eyes, peeled you are definitely for the majority in the wrong i'm not saying she's absolved of responsibility because her accusing you of sa is deplorable in of itself nobody in this situation is right here right but a lot of the times there's not going to be a right or wrong person it's just going to be two people and what happened between them in their story and your story right i would say that i'm glad he's alive you know i'm glad other than him instead of him going out with his plan a he is here to tell the story and reflect on his behavior my issue is instead of really reflecting on your behavior and trying to see things from the perspective of others and maybe trying to build yourself up to a point where you can learn to interact with people where you can flourish in a social environment or at least get better to cope with these issues right you're delving into the world of inceldom and you're delving into the world of the black pill and i'm telling you that this just like how your story almost ended just now that is where the black pill is going to land you the black pill never fails to carry everybody that adopts that mindset down the stream and it ends in death it's always death or it's always some kind of very very unpleasant end for people who take the black pill and take incel and i really really would advise you to get away from anybody who's pushing that to you and go reflect on your behavior on your own and see a mental health professional if you can the solution to your problems, at least from my perspective, is that you need to stop looking for the internet for absolutes and answers to real life problems that are going to reply, that are going to require higher thinking than absolutes. Stop taking pills, stop joining groups, stop listening to internet people who are feeding you bullshit and use some critical thinking. If you can't get other people to think on a higher level around you to at least help see your perspective, then you need to do that. If you cannot flourish in social situations, if you cannot, what you need to understand is ultimately, no matter how people perceive you your reaction to everything is what matters and you got to understand that you have to push past shit like this and keep living because if you keep living and you keep learning it will get better you will get into new social situations where you're away from people who are holding things against you you will get into better social situations where you will be able to flourish a little better and if you learn how to interact with people this barrier for creepiness that you're dealing with will literally go away Ultimately, your unfortunate scenario is that you are in a place where you made a mistake. And sometimes the mistake is literally just existing around people and they're going to draw conclusions about you. And that's the truth for people who have any kind of flaw, whether that you being socially inept, you being overweight, you being underweight, you dressing a certain way, or you talking a certain way and carrying yourself a certain way. Where there are people, where there is perception, there are going to be people who are going to make fun of you and critique you and criticize you for literally no reason. And that's something harsh you're going to have to accept. But it's not like accept it like the black bill. It's and it's OK because there are going to be plenty of people out there who are going to be willing to embrace you you just need to do the work required to make it so you can meet those people and get out of these situations a lot of the problem is incels don't want to get out of these situations they would rather wallow in their sadness and misery to the point where they end themselves than actually do the work required to push themselves out of these unfortunate scenarios that all being said this is one of my more yappier videos it's not more comedy focused because a lot of people made the complaint that a lot of my videos were too com too comedic so to make to make up for that i gave you a video where i literally gave a play-by-play -play of my own personal experience advice and a rundown of what i would do different in a situation like this to try to get this guy to be a little better around people ultimately i do think you were very much the person in the wrong in this scenario i also think candy did some things that were very fucked up but you overall 
with your full perspective and all of your actions from the perspective of everybody else that literally isn't you you are a weirdo in this scenario and i'm glad you acknowledge that because i also think you are weird if i was in that school and i saw your behavior or if i was even candy for example i would do the same thing i would think you're a weirdo and i would warn any girl in the school that you're a weirdo because that's what you do when you find weird people regardless of if it's good faith or not that being said if you like the video like and subscribe and that's my honest to god advice on this situation i think this guy just needs a lot of mental help and he needs to get out of the incel mindset it's been the same thing i've been saying over and over again but at least you can get kind of a play-by-play -play of how i'm thinking about it that being said for the next invading incels i will be going back to incels.is and there will be a lot more comedy and humor so if you like the video, like and subscribe, and I'm out. Someone from the dark. Yeah, okay. I just walked in. I'm trying to get some more. Don't tell the cast. They better lock in. Walk them down if they talk. Down. I got chops on my side. I got 50